Hello beautiful people, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I am bringing you my friend and my guest, Irene. So I met this beautiful person when I started the soap business that I had. I was doing some research on what markets that I can go to and I met her at one of the markets that I went. I had a chat with her, I read her story online and then I invited her to do a collaboration with me. And since then, we have been great friends. We both have a great passion about natural skincare products and we both care deeply about what we put on our skin and what we eat. I know Irene's story will move you and not only that, you will be more aware of what you are actually putting on your skin. Trust me, if you really care and love yourself, you will definitely want to continue watching this episode because she will share the story about why she started her skincare products, which is Red Helm Organics. Now, however you're watching this episode, either on your phone or on your laptop, please do screenshot this and tag us on social. We would really appreciate you sharing the love. All right, enjoy the interview. Before we share your journey about Red Helm Organics, I would love to say a huge thank you for sparing time for me and for everyone to share your journey. <laughs> wow, well, I'm very excited to be here, Ting. Thank you so much for inviting me. So excited to be here and a little bit nervous. Tell me. Well, it's normal. It's good. You know what? Sometimes people get confused with uh, the feeling of excitement and nervousness. So maybe you're actually excited. <laughs> and before yes. you talk about Red Helm Organics, I would love to know, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling really calm um, mm -hmm. and reflective. So, yeah, feeling really good. <laughs> Did you do? I'm so excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> You're like all the emotions at once. Yeah, all of, the, all of them at once. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, would you mind telling everyone what Red Helm Organics is all about, please? Yeah. So when I started Red Helm, the intention was to create um, a business that was a better alternative. Um, to what was out there already. So a better alternative to the mass-produced synthetic skincare products that um, I was using at the time. Um, and I felt like there needed to be something that was different, um, that was made in small batches, that used um, very natural um, nourishing ingredients that was good for me and good for my skin. Yeah. So what can people expect from Rare Home Organics? What is it about? So a lot of our products are formulated um, to be completely natural. In fact, all of them are. And um, I don't use any water-based ingredients, which means I don't need any preservatives in my products. So it's 100% active, all natural ingredients. And where we can, we try to source organic. And we do pay a lot of attention to our suppliers. So we want um, ingredients that are really good for the planet, but are also produced in a really ethically um, sort of way. Uh -huh. And for those who don't already shop with you, they don't know about your packaging. Do you want to touch on yeah. that? Too? So um, we were probably one of the first to do a push-up deodorant in a completely cardboard um, container. So we didn't use any plastics for our first deodorant. And um, this initially this was received differently from different people. Some people loved it. They loved the um, zero waste, eco-friendly side of it. But there were people who struggled with the transition from plastic to um, cardboard because, I mean, plastic is a lot more convenient to use and it's easier to use. Mm. However, there are a few differences with cardboard. Um, you know, initially we had issues with the formula being difficult to push up, which we didn't anticipate, and, um, and it just wasn't as pleasant to use as a plastic container. However, um, during this time, there was a lot of campaigning about zero waste and eco-friendly brands, and, and we got fully embraced by the zero waste community. And a lot of our customers started to embrace the fact that, you know what, we need to transition ourselves from the, you know, ubiquitously used plastic products and use more eco-friendly alternatives, even if they're a slight adjustments 
um, involved. So, yeah, a lot of our products now have been transitioned to um, cardboard packaging. So, for instance, our um, very popular little farms, um, they're probably my best sellers at the moment, and um, my dry shampoos, which we use um, all natural powders, and that's in a completely cardboard container as well. So, I'm very excited about our new products, and we've got more to come um, in the future. And we're hoping to um, eventually create a line where we don't need any plastic in our packaging at all. Mm. Are they biodegradable, by the way? They are. They're all um, compostable. So as long as you remove the stickers, um, they're all fully compostable. You can put them in your compost or they'll degrade within um, about 6 to 12 months of being yeah. turned into trash. Yeah. But eventually we will be... Um, Changing our packaging to um, fully cardboard, so there won't be any stickers or anything. Um, it will just be printed on the cardboard, so that will yeah. make it even, even more eco-friendly. Yeah, um, I love what you said before about um, using the plastic. It was more convenient. But the funny thing is that there are many things that we're doing, even though it's convenient to us, but it's not great for the environment. Yeah, I think, um, look, it's going to be a slow transition for most of us. Um, it is it is hard to break away from what we're used to and the products that we love and know. Um, but I think if you take it in small steps, it's, it's not too difficult or overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So even just little things like changing the type of packaging you use for a skincare product, for example, and going to, you know, even um, a dry shampoo powder as opposed to the spray or using a lip balm, a tinted lip balm instead of a lipstick that's packaged in plastic packaging. Mm. So things like that, you can just start small and slowly build up. Um, and I find once you start doing that, you, you, you get used to um, looking for more sustainable alternatives and you start to increase what you have. And eventually you don't think about it. Anymore. Yeah, because every little bit helps. <laughs> um, well, why did you start Red Home Organics? Take people back to before you start the skincare product. Um, well, it started during uh, while I was on dialysis. So I was diagnosed with kidney disease um, as a teenager, and um, I was um, managed to maintain my kidney function until about my late twenties when um, I had to begin dialysis treatment. And it was during that time that my skin started to break out. Um, I noticed I wasn't tolerating all the synthetic products that I was using. And one in particular was my natural deodorant, my deodorant at the time. Um, it wasn't working for me and I looked for alternatives. Um, I tried one natural alternative um, and it was great. It, it was very effective. However, I didn't like the packaging and I didn't like... Um, some of them were in blocks, so I had to hold them and they got a bit sticky after a while. I didn't like mm. the scent. So there was a lot about what was available at the time that I didn't like. And um, this was during a time when natural deodorants weren't a big thing. Mm. So not many people um, were aware of it. It wasn't mainstream in the market. There wasn't much to choose from. So I got the idea, why don't I make my own? Um, and I spent probably a good two, three years um, researching um, cosmetic chemistry and formulating products mm -hmm. and trying different formulas for my natural deodorants and um, eventually I I stumbled upon a formula that I really liked that was effective and um, I tested on my friends, family, um, my physio, my reflexologist, anyone who was willing to try it and I got really good feedback. So I thought, well, why don't I turn this into a business and sell them? Because mm. I needed it. So I'm sure there's going to be other people who would want um, a natural alternative um, to the what was out there for deodorants. And that's how it began. And then I just kept going from there. Wait, so everything started with deodorant? It started with wanting a better alternative to deodorants. And then um, from there, I realised, well, if I can do natural deodorants, why don't I try something for my face? So that's when I started transitioning to, um, well, not transitioning, but also including um, my cleansing oil 
uh, my face oil range and um, yeah, a few other ranges that I've added along the way for um, face care. Yeah. Um, I've also found them very effective and um, you know, a lot of my customers have loved them. So it's been quite um, a fun journey um, doing mm. that and creating all these different formulas and different products. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of um, being a fun journey, what has been, I guess, your top three highlights since you started your business? Um, top three. So the first one I, that comes to mind is um, the relationship I've developed with my customers. Um, mm. Being a very small business means um, I get to have a closer relationship to my customers and I meet them face-to-face -face at markets or um, they'll communicate with me on social media or by email and it's so rewarding to hear their feedback and um, to receive so much positive feedback and a lot of the times um, I do take on board all feedback so I even encourage um, you know any feedback that helps me to um, reformulate or um, change my products for better so mm. it's it's been a great um, and exciting journey just meeting the customers and, and growing with them and, and learning what's important to them yeah. and what their needs are and how mm. they've changed or adjust my formulas to meet mm. that demand. Mm. Yeah. So some of the other highlights um, is also the creative process of formulating. Mm. So that's, um, you know, I didn't know that I had this ability, I could do this. Um, this is completely outside of what I used to do. I used to work in a corporate area and, um, you know, I never imagined I'd be formulating skincare products. And mm -hmm. So that side has been really exciting as well. Um, and just, yeah, all the challenges that I've met and been able to overcome um, and all the setbacks that I have moved forward from, um, mm -hmm. those things have been really rewarding. Yeah. So they're the biggest highlights. Uh, you know how just now you say uh, the creative process was one of your highlights, the formulating the product. Uh, mm -hmm. For those people who don't know you personally, you are studying skincare diploma, is it? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm doing a um, diploma in organic skincare. Um, I've almost finished it. Um, but prior to that, um, I spent um, a fair amount of years just doing my own research on cosmetic chemistry and, and you know, the regulations around that and those things. And I also um, did a workshop with a cosmetic chemist as well. So I did do a lot of those things prior to, um, to starting this. I just want to mention it because I don't want people to think that you are just a random person who just go and research <laughs> and be like, okay. You started that way. I mean... Um, with the natural deodorant formula, it started out looking at um, home recipes and what people were doing. Um, yeah. And then I became more um, focused on, you know, learning about the ins and outs of ins and outs of cosmetic chemistry, and um, and and how to formulate properly. So and and also learning about the benefits of the ingredients that I use and and how to effectively utilize them in a formula. So. Um, it did start off that way, but um, it then progressed and grew from there. So there is a lot of um, a lot of knowledge that needs to go with formulating something effectively that um, can be solved. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that was learnt along the way. With lots of um, hard work and um, reading and trial yeah. and error. As you talked about your highlights, would you like to share your maybe? top three um, challenges that you have faced and overcome? Yeah, so um, probably the biggest challenge was um, navigating social media. Um, I didn't really use social media often um, and I never used Instagram prior to my business. So um, that was quite an interesting um, learning curve for me. Um, mm. I'm still learning. Um, and as well as the marketing aspect, I mean, that has been quite um, difficult as well. Um, not coming from a marketing background, it's basically been learning as I go, um, asking other um, you know, business owners and small business owners how they do it. Mm. And so the markets have been really helpful for that because I've met a lot of other makers um, who 
you know, are in the same boat as me. They're trying to get their products out there and they're trying to market as well. So they've taught me a lot. And just speaking to different people, learning a lot about my customer base um, has been incredibly helpful for that as well. And I think just, you know, overcoming all the um, unexpected obstacles that come with the business. So, you know, like I mentioned before with the, um, the deodorant being difficult to push up in the beginning, um, when I created my formula, I didn't have in mind the, the effect the weather would have mm. on a lot of my natural products. So with natural ingredients, you're not going to have fillers and um, ingredients that help keep it in a certain form consistently right. for hot weather and cold weather. So with my natural deodorant, I found I formulated it during a, a um, hot period, so during summer, and it works beautifully during summer. However, during winter, especially Melbourne winter, it gets cold. Mm. Um, it became very solid and difficult to push up. Um, right. And I didn't, I didn't anticipate that because I hadn't tested that prior to um, selling to customers. Mm. And so the great thing about you know having customer feedback is they tell you these things. And then I went back to the drawing board, reformulated, and worked out all the problems and issues that I was having with the initial um, containers. And then, you know, now we've got a really good formula that um, I absolutely love and my customers love. And, um, you know, I'm really happy with what we've got now. So we we do the natural um, deodorants in a really nice shop stick now. It's a really smooth um, formula yeah. for both winter and summer. Yeah. So for those who are listening and watching, oh, what did you say? So those were some of the big challenges that um, yeah I can expect. Mm. For the, I was gonna say for those who are listening and watching, if you are interested in natural product, especially deodorant with eco-friendly packaging, I will be leaving Red Helm Organics details in the description. <laughs> Well, I actually want to ask, um, for those people who might want to start their own thing, their own side hustle, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? I would say um, do your research. Um, make sure you thoroughly test your products and get as many people as you can um, to try your products, get as much feedback as you can, and go for it. You know, don't don't let your fears and don't let your concerns hold you back. It's okay to make mistakes. Um, it's okay to fail as long as you keep getting back up and you keep moving forward. And don't be afraid to reach out for help. Don't be afraid to go on Instagram and look for other um, makers out there and, and see if they're willing to offer any advice. I found people are more than happy to help. And, yeah. Um, I've been happy to help others. Um, I'm happy to help people formulate and um, troubleshoot their formulas. I've done that um, quite often. I go into um, a lot of um, forums and um, people who talk about their issues with formulating, I love assisting. And um, so I'm happy to do that. So, you know, I'm happy to take questions and, um, and you know, don't be afraid to just talk about what you need help with and ask for help. I think the biggest... One of the biggest things I learned doing this um, was the importance of um, external help, not trying yeah. to do everything by yourself and overwhelming yourself. Um, you can get quite burnt out doing mm -hmm. running your own business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, make sure you um, pace yourself mm -hmm. and, and have a good structure of how you're going to organise your time. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of burnt out and asking for help, how can we help you? Wow, well, that's a good question, Ping. Um, I don't know, just, yeah, just asking if I need anything. <laughs> asking is sometimes really helpful, you know, asking people how they are. Sometimes we just need to talk and it's, it's it can be really therapeutic to just talk about any frustrations and, and um, you know, things that are overwhelming with the business or outside of business, so that, that's a really good way to help someone um, to ask how they are and just listen. Yeah, and you before you said about the fear, you know, like you said don't let your fear stop you. 
How did you overcome your fear when you first step out your, of your comfort zone to start this business? Um, meditation. Um, meditation. Has been probably a godsend. So um, I meditate regularly. And when I, before I make each new batch of um, product, I do meditate before I do it. Um, that way I can be focused and know that I'm going to make the products um, perfectly. And, um, and I like to, I think it also makes a difference because my products are made very mindfully and um, people notice it in, in the way they're poured and in the way they feel. Um, you know, I make them with a lot of care. Mm. Um, they're not just, you know, mass manufactured by mm. a machine. So they're mm. made by people with their energy and their um, love for the product. So you're also buying that when you buy something that's made by an artisan. I love how you just said you made your products mindfully because that's what happens when you support a small business because you are supporting that person's dream and also obviously supporting whatever story is behind it. And truly every small business owners are doing literally everything mindfully and with a lot of love. But for those people who don't meditate, how do you think they can overcome their fear? Uh, well, to be honest, sometimes it's um, just doing it. You know, it's okay to do things even though you're afraid. Mm. Um, just, you know, push yourself, get there, go for it. Um, if you have to talk to someone about it or just, you know, tell yourself you can do it and don't be afraid of what comes after that. And, you know, let yourself feel it, um, but just do it. Mm. Sometimes it, it's the part of, it's just before doing something that is the hardest part. Mm. So I think just take the action and then worry about the consequences later. I think um, I forgot who said it. The quote say that courage is knowing that you have the fear, but you're going to do it anyways. So yeah. thank you for you know having the courage to make this natural product with eco-friendly packaging. And you know what? From what you have said, you yourself have made mistakes too. Like mm -hmm. like what you said, you know, you made the deodorant and then it was in summer and it didn't work in winter and etc. So like you said, mm -hmm. it is okay to make mistakes and then just improve and continue to evolve. That's right. Yeah. And and look, um, before you start any business, it's it's important to be prepared. You know, you don't want to start something before you're ready and, and you understand mm -hmm. all that's needed and required. You know, whether it be your legal requirements or your accounting requirements, just make sure you're prepared in, on that level before you um, launch because, you know, a lot of people can get themselves into trouble when they don't um, fully research that aspect of it. So um, you do need to be prepared. You need to make sure that you've done your research. You've, um, you've, you've looked into everything that you need to ensure um, needs to be completed before you start, but then make sure you do start. Yeah, that's why you say do your research was your number one tip. <laughs> yeah. Well, because you do skincare, what is your personal skincare routine like? So I like to keep it natural. I like mm. to keep it very simple. Mm. Um, I don't like to use too many products on my skin. Mm. I think, um, you know, a lot of my customers tell me that the the biggest issue they have is using um, products that have a lot of preservatives and a lot of fillers mm. and a lot of synthetic fragrances. So um, I have a very basic routine which involves cleansing oil in the morning, so mm. a gentle cleanse, and then I just wash that off with a bamboo face gel that also does a, a very light exfoliation on my skin. And then I'll either use a um, face mist of rose water or sometimes I won't use that at all, and then I'll just moisturise with um, face oil. So, and all natural ingredients, and I find that's for me been the most effective. Um, I used to have really bad acne, and really sensitive. I have really sensitive skin, so using something simple, something very natural, no soaps, um, you know, no sulfates in my um, cleansing products, really helped to balance my skin and and also helped with all the acne that I had at the time. So 
that's, yeah. that's what I've got in the day. So that's what you do in the morning. What about at night? Um, well, at night I probably um, just use the face oil. So I do wash my face. Um, not with the cleansing oil. I just use um, cold water. And then I'll use the oil, the natural oils, and I'll use something for my eyes. Um, mm -hmm. I have uh, a balm that has vitamin C and B, so that I find that's really good for the eyes at night. So I do put that under my eyes, and that's it. So, you know, again, simple, easy. Yeah. And once a week I will um, use a, uh, exfoliation. So mm -hmm. I have an exfoliating powder. Um, my favourite one is the rose, rose hip um, granules with um, my pink clay. So that's really, um, it helps to exfoliate and also helps to draw out impurities from the skin as well. So I use that once a week. Again, you know, having sensitive skin, you don't want to over exfoliate your skin. Um, but you, you should, um, you know, be mindful of exfoliating at least once a week just to help them with their skin cells and to help your skin rejuvenate. Uh, everything that you do, clearly it works because your skin is like glowing. Hey, right? look at your cheeks. <laughs> 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 and the stuff that you mentioned, are they all your own products? Yeah, yeah. So I use my own products. Um, I formulated them for my skin, uh, for sensitive skin, but they're great for all skin types. And I just wanted products that didn't have any preservatives or fillers and, and um, synthetic fragrances that would be um, helpful and also um, nourishing for my skin. So. I use everything that I make, um, mm -hmm. and I don't. I haven't really needed to buy any other products for my skin. Yeah, just now you told everyone that it is important to exfoliate at least once a week. Thank you for that tip. Um, what would be other tips that you would give everyone to improve their skin health? I think my number one tip is hydration. So, Drinking. Um, Water? Yeah, it's not as simple as drinking water. Um, I mean, it's important to drink water, um, you know, to clear out the toxins and to stay hydrated. But there's other forms of hydration that people don't really um, keep in mind. So a really good way of hydrating is to put a little squeeze of lemon juice mm. into your water and that just helps to activate your water and helps to um, put more electrolytes into the water. Yeah. And I find coconut water is incredible for mm. hydration. And um, I also like juicing. So I like um, celery juice. I also like um, cucumber juice as well mm. for mm. hydration. And it's you also have to be mindful of the things that dehydrate the skin. So trying to cut out caffeine. Um, a lot of women drink a lot of coffee a lot of matcha tea or um, green tea, black teas, as well as chocolates. These all have caffeine in them and they're very hydrating. Um, they're hydrating for the body and the skin. So if you want to look your best and if you want to have glowing, moisturised skin, um, it's important to um, cut out those things if you can and also incorporate a lot more um, fluids that are very hydrating as well. And also salts in your diet. Um, that can be very dehydrating as well. So we have a lot of salt in, in the modern diet. So mm -hmm. also being mindful of that and, and making sure you try and cut that out as well. So those yeah. would be my top tips for, for skincare. Yeah, I love that it has nothing to do with, I guess, exfoliating or whatever product that you need to use. <laughs> I mean, products, um, the external are great as well. Mm. But I think if you don't have a good base and if you're not health, if you don't eat healthy and if you're not um, hydrating well enough, then your products can only go so far. Yeah. So using natural, nourishing, vitamin-rich products are great because they help bring out the glow in your skin and they help to reduce, you know, the um, fine lines, maybe some pigmentation, things like that. They're great for that. However, it needs to be a complete holistic. Um, kind of way of looking after your skin. Otherwise, you're not going to get um, the complete results that you're looking for. You're just going to be disappointed every time you use your um, eye balm and it doesn't um, help as much with you know, the dark circle because you're probably 
having a lot of dehydrating foods mm. or you're probably having a lot of fat in your yeah. diet which um, can cause you know issues with the liver um, so things like that are important to keep in mind as well so you know while we i do my best to formulate incredible products that are great for the skin um you know it's important that you also pay attention to what you put inside yeah, I love how you just mentioned that because it really all starts from the inside out. Like, you are so right. Like People can put however best product they can on their skin and it might temporarily heal them, but whatever is bad inside, the toxins, it will still come in. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, and I guess because you were on dialysis, so you are very careful of what you eat. So for those who are listening and watching, Irene really has been there and done that. And look at her skin now. <laughs> well, actually, what would you say to those, I would say, especially, no, both, both um, ladies and gentlemen uh, who have acne, what would you say to them? So, if you, I would recommend going to see a dermatologist if you have really severe acne. But I find with mild acne, um, changing your diet can be pretty helpful. So that that's where I would start is diet, um, reducing the fats and incorporating a lot more cleansing fruits and vegetables um, makes a huge difference. Cutting out the dairy completely. I found dairy was a big trigger for me, so I don't have any dairy. Yeah. In my diet um, and you can get calcium from various other foods so you know if you're worried about the calcium really look do some research and find out what um, other alternative foods are really high in calcium and make sure you incorporate that in your diet but um also you know you have to remember silica is important too so silica is great for helping produce collagen in the skin it's also help, helpful for collagen in the uh, joints and, you know, hair health and just for your body as well. So, you know, I make sure I have foods rich in silica, lots of vegetables, green leafy vegetables. Um, I like to incorporate cruciferous vegetables, which are really cleansing, like broccoli, cabbage, um, things like that, and also very hydrating foods like um, a lot of um, cucumbers, a lot of celery, um, mm. fruits are really hydrating. Um, Salads, lettuce, um, yeah. those foods are really hydrating as well. So, and I do have um, a lot of leafy greens. Which I'm mm. I find they're really helpful in um, keeping your body healthy um, and they're very nutrient rich. But again, it's, it's about volume, so you need to incorporate a lot more of these in your diet. Um, yeah. What I do, that's what I do. <laughs> I just want to quickly remind everyone who is listening and watching that um, this is Irene's personal experience. Before you change any of your lifestyle or whatever, you do need to seek medical um, advice. And we are just here sharing her story. And if you are also interested, I have interviewed several um, naturopathy people, so you can go and check it out. But before I ask you my last question, do you feel like there is anything in particular that you would like to talk about? Um, I'm just very grateful and thankful for you, um, you know, inviting me to do this podcast. I was quite nervous when you first asked me because I've never done one before. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's been such a great experience. It's a, been a pleasure to be here. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. But is there any other things that you feel like people need to know about Rare Helm other than it is all natural and the eco-friendly packaging? Well, Rare Helm is it's been a, a definitely a business of love. And um, it's, I guess I say this in a joking way to my friends, but it's it's my form of activism. Um, you know, I want um, bigger businesses to be more mindful of the kind of products they're producing. It shouldn't just be about profits. I mean, obviously, for all businesses, profits is important. We can't keep going without a profit. However, um, I think there should be more products out there that have better options for sustainability. 
and mm. um, and that do pay a lot of attention to a lot of the ingredients that they're using. Um, yes. My biggest concern is some of the preservatives that we use in our mainstream skincare products can be potentially dangerous. You know? mm. For instance, um, one of the preservatives that we use in Australia is um, is banned in Europe. So, you know, and there's been a lot of links to um, the potential damage it can cause to our organs. So, you know, just being mindful of what products you're using, what ingredients are incorporated in them. Yes. And for bigger businesses to take notice because natural skincare is now um, a, a really big industry and, yes. and customers are very, very smart. They're yes. becoming more educated. They're very aware of what they're doing and what they're buying and, and that's their form of activism is buying products that um, are natural, that are good for the environment, that are mindfully made and um, they want to support businesses that um, you know care about these things, care about their customers and care about their impact on the yes. environment. So um, you know that's that's basically what Red Helm is is really about is is trying to create um, a normalisation of these type of products and and if I can do one small bit to contribute to that um, you know I'll be really happy and proud of that so and that's why I do like to support other people other makers that are doing similar things to me mm. I think it's great to have more of us out there who are doing these things. And, and hopefully, you know, larger corporations that um, are dominating the industry at the moment will take notice and start to change the way they do things as well. And I yeah. think that, you know, small changes like this um, can make a big impact in, in, in the future. Yeah, 100%. And I feel like when people are supporting small businesses, not only... Uh, especially with natural products like yours, not only they will be looking after their skin, they will be also looking after the environment. And like you said, it's more sustainable because really there is only one planet, right? So if we don't look after it, if we don't look at the long term, mm -hmm. then you are only having a short term gain. And how is that helpful for our future? Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you for reminding everyone how. I guess, how big of an impact that they have when they are supporting small businesses. My last question for you, though, today, for today, will be, how do you think that we can be there for each other in general? Um, well, like I said before, um, you know, just reaching out to someone. Um, mm. I think, you know, especially during COVID, um, during the COVID pandemic, loneliness has been a a huge issue and if we just take the time from our busy lives to remember the people in our lives you know remember our friends our family or even our neighbors who um, might be lonely and just checking in on them um, spending some time with them even a quick phone call or a text message to see how they are mm. um, can make a huge difference in someone's life yeah um, although, you know, with my own personal experience on dialysis, I felt very isolated and very lonely. Um, I stopped working. I wasn't around um, my friends as often. I was away from my family. So, you know, it was quite a lonely process. And I found, for me, the best way to help with my loneliness was to reach out to others who were lonely. Yeah. And to company because I found in that we developed connections and, and it really helped me feel more connected to others. And I think that's that's a real that's the biggest thing about loneliness is the lack of connection. You know, you don't feel connected to to others. So um, yeah, definitely taking the time for other people and just seeing how they are. Yes, a simple message will definitely help. Actually, while we talked about while you touch on um pandemic, what is the biggest less? This is my last question. What is Biggest lesson that you have learned in 2020? The importance of rest. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the last couple of years since I've started the business, it's just been go, go, go. I've just yeah. been doing one market after another, creating new products as I go, um, you know, navigating marketing and, and Instagram and all my other things. I, I had a million things going at once. 
And because of the pandemic, I couldn't do any markets anymore. You know, for me, I realised it helped me slow down mm. and it helped me reflect and take stock of what was really important to me. And um, it wasn't until I started slowing down that I realised how exhausted I was from all the work I'd been doing. And um, and just taking this time to rest mm. has been so rejuvenating, mm. um, you know, for myself, for my creativity. Mm. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm so excited for 2021 because I've got so many new ideas. I'm going to look at it with a fresh outlook. And um, so just taking that time to slow down um, in this busy world can yes. make a world of difference and to help clear the mind. Yeah, I love it. I hope um, those who are listening and watching also have learned their own lessons and about slowing down as well. And you just mentioned that there are new things coming in 2021. So I'm very excited. So for those who are ex- uh, listening and watching, please stay tuned. And I, again, I'll be leaving Red Helm Organic's details in the description. But for now, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you, Jane. Thanks for having me. It's been a great time. I've had a great time. So, yeah, yeah. it's been great. I really, really, really love the advice that she gave for everyone to have a healthier skin, which is stay hydrated. It is so simple. Everyone can do it. Like she said, you can put as many products as you want on the external show, but if you don't heal yourself internally, then the problem will continue to surface anyways. And staying hydrated is just so simple. I also love that the biggest lesson that she has learned in 2020 is the importance of rest. And I really hope that you have given yourself a chance to slow down and breathe this year. We all somehow have been programmed to rush, to get things instantly, to constantly be busy. 2020 has given everyone a chance to prioritize what is actually important to us and that is different for everyone. We all have been given a chance to slow down, to connect, to stop comparing and to rest. What she said honestly has tied in perfectly to the mindful chest for this year because this episode is actually the last episode for 2020. I hope you have enjoyed all the interviews so far. I hope you have loved all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all the service. I would appreciate it if you can tell me what are the topics that you might be interested in. Again, don't forget to screenshot this however you're watching it, either on your phone or on your laptop. Tag us and share the love. Now don't forget to subscribe, click the thumbs up button if you have loved it and share it with someone because you never know what they're going through or what they might need. And remember, you are amazing and you are not alone. I will see you next time.